I'm going to talk about uh, some results that I will, that I have obtained with uh, Stefano Almi, Luigi Ambrosio, Massimo Fornasier, Giuseppe Savare, and Francesco Salombrino on what we call especially homogeneous evolutionary games. So the the title uh, fits somehow in in mathematical uh, theory of, of of games, and uh, uh, throughout the seminar, all the first three words will be will be explained. Um, so what. We'll, Actually, especially in homogeneous, go go together, and then uh, evolutionary means that, of course, they they, they are not just uh, statics. We're not looking for equilibrium; we're looking for uh, a dynamics for uh, approaching equilibria, ideally. And uh, so, the table of contents of this seminar is basically reporting on three uh, papers that I've co-authored with the guys there. And the first one is motivated by the replicator dynamics, and uh, is the one that set the theory and the theoretical framework for studying these games. This evolutionary games. Then, uh, together with Francesco Solombrino, we extended it a little bit to uh, make it uh, suitable for being applied to uh, social dynamics with label switching, as we call it, meaning that uh, there will be new features, including the possibility of changing species in a way. And then, uh, just recently this year, with the, together also with Stefano Almi, we devised an, an, uh, an approximation scheme for, for solving the, the continuity equation, which is the, uh, the equation that, that governs the evolution of the distribution of the players. So let me first start with the motivation and the, the idea for, for uh, introducing this, uh, this model and this framework is to um, study the behavior of interacting agents. So we, we, you have to imagine to have a population of agents and this guy uh, has strategies to play, so decisions to make. And uh, it's, it's something that happens in everyday life that we don't always stick to our decisions, we, we, we change it somehow. And the, the, the change that we might uh, have to, on, on our decisions come from, from the interaction that we have both with other individuals and with the external world. So some conditions might change and then we might want to uh, res respond differently to the same input as last time, say. Um, and, and, and this this evolves, right? So and the, the, the What's present in game theory is always this idea that one has each player has to maximize their payoff. So my background is is from control of variation, so I always like minimizing things, but just put a minus sign, and it's pretty much the same the same idea, right? So we want to get the optimum out of uh, out of something, uh, which measures the, uh, the 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 profit of taking an action, and. Uh, um, the concept of, of, of equilibria is, uh, was, was introduced at the beginning of, uh, at the birth of game theory by Nash. And Nash says uh, an equilibrium is a state where if uh, just one person changes a strategy, the payoff is going to, is going to go down, is going to, to, to diminish a little bit, right? So you don't want to change the strategy from your equilibrium um, situation. So this would be a very static, uh, configuration because every person keeps playing the same strategy because they know that this is the one that gives the maximum uh, the maximum payoff. But in in everyday life and uh, and also in, in every mathematical models, we 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 might start from an initial condition which is not in equilibrium. So the idea is how do we move towards equilibria? How do we evolve towards equilibria? Now I mentioned Nash equilibria because these are the possibly the most famous ones, but there are some other types of equilibria which I'm not going to explore at this time. But uh, they can be defined as, as particular states, states of the system. And uh, the way to select the steady state that we go to is still, is always measured uh, by this um, uh, convenience criterion. So we want to, we want to, to, to choose the one that, that, pays, that pays off the most. And uh, since uh, we also want to evolve our strategies. The strategy that makes us gain the most evolves according to this uh, success that they have. And the last sentence is pretty much in this, in this spirit. So strategies evolve according to their individual success, meaning that strategies that give a high payoff will be enhanced, will be preferred uh, uh, more and more, whereas strategies that, that don't give us a good payoff will be suppressed and diminished uh, along the evolution. And uh, so the, we have a, a specially distributed players, meaning that there is a physical space where the players are, and for us it would be RD or, or a compact of, of, uh, of RD. 
and uh, uh, the evolution of the strategy is modeled through this replicator dynamics, which since maybe 30, 40 years is very popular among biologists uh, and uh, we, we, we formalize it in a, in a probabilistic way. And uh, the, the way that, that re replicator dynamics evolved, uh, functions is, is, is the following. So each strategy um, is compared to all the other ones uh, and uh, the more they perform better than the average of the strategies, the more they are enhanced and the worse they perform uh, compared to the average of the strategies, the more they are suppressed. Okay. So in the, in the mathematical description of the system, we are going to take this point of view. So we have uh, U, which is capital U, which is the, maybe I can point, right, uh, which is the space of the available strategies. Uh, a probability measure on U is a mixed strategy, which we call sigma. And uh, we know that we can't just rely on pure strategies to have Nash equilibria because it was precisely Nash who proved that mixed strategies are needed to prove the existence of Nash equilibria. Then a position of the players in, uh, in, the, in the physical space, Rd, is denoted by x. And then we consider a distribution of players together with the strategies. So a realization of this thing, which is going to be denoted by sigma, which is a probability measure ideally on this space. Okay, so it's a probability on Rd cross the probabilities over the strategies. So what we, what we did was to uh, give a, both a Lagrangian and a Eulerian description of the evolution, and we proved the, the existence, uniqueness, and stability of the solution through the equation that governs the evolution. And uh, this, especially the, the stability of the solutions, uh, has the advantage of, of uh, making us obtain as a byproduct, as a corollary, the convergence <clears throat> of finite agent models to a mean field formulation, meaning that we have, so since we're talking about probability measures, uh, if we have a finite number of agents, we can consider the empirical measure. And then when, when we shoot the number of the players to plus infinity, then we approximate a continuum distribution. And this is the one that satisfies the continuity equation in, uh, in that probability space. And since it's a, a continuous distribution, then uh, this is usually called the mean field limit of, uh, of, the, of the system. And the, the setup, the, 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 the tools that are needed for, for studying this, this problem are uh, functional analytic mostly, and uh, we, we have to deal with the interaction dynamics coming from this uh, checking whether a strategy is better than the other ones, pretty much. And this in turn is, is, can be phrased as a continuity equation in, uh, in Banach spaces that, that can be a little um, complicated to construct. But let me first start by, the, by describing the replicator dynamics. And uh, so as I said before, we call U the, the set of strategies and we assume at the moment that there's a finite number of them. And then we have a function that tells us uh, the payoff. So I have to imagine to be player one that, that chooses among the, the strategies in the first set of the Cartesian product U, and then I play against my opponent, which is player two, and we choose two strategies, UI and UJ, and J of UI and UJ tells me how, how much I gain if I play the game with those strategies against my, my opponent. And sigma i's are the frequencies at which the, 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 the strategies are chosen, right? So I, I want to measure the, the as I said, the, the relative performance of my strategy of a strategy UI, say, against all the others. So what I do is I test uh, my strategy against the, all the possible realizations of the opponents together with the uh, frequency at which they choose the strategy, sigma j here. And then I have to subtract uh, all the possible other strategies that I can play weighted by the frequency at which they, they are chosen. Okay, so this kernel delta is the so-called replicator kernel and the replicator equation describes the evolution of these frequencies. So the, the equation is a sigma dot, that is how sigma changes in time, is precisely given by this delta applied, multiplied by sigma itself. So what happens here, if my strategy UI, the one that I'm looking at, is doing better than the average of all the others, this delta will be positive. So the logarithmic, so the logarithm of sigma will have a uh, its time derivative will be positive. So I want to enhance this strategy. And then on the contrary, if, if, if UI is poorly performing with respect to the average of all the other strategies that I can, that I have at my disposal, then this delta will be negative and then the strategy will be progressively suppressed in this way. 
And uh, going towards the idea of a mean field replicator dynamics, now we have to move to probability distribution. So we take a mixed strategy sigma, which is a probability measure on, uh, on the space U. And uh, we basically write this kernel delta here that was given in, in the discrete setting in the continuous one. Okay, so we have J of the strategy U that I'm looking at against the, all the other ones weighted by their distribution minus the, all the possible combinations that I can have with my all other strategies, right? And this is really simple that it, 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 it is the, the discrete one if we choose a discrete probability distribution. So if we choose, a, if we choose the, the, the empirical measure centered at the UJs, then we have precisely the delta end of the slide before. So now if we assume that we have an initial condition, a discrete one, sigma n, so I'm counting the number of, of the strategies, uh, at time zero that converges in the probability, uh, the space of probability measure to a given sigma bar, then we can prove, well, this is the idea of the midfield uh, limit, that the, the, the time evolution of this sigma n converges to the, the sigma at time t, the strategy sigma at time t, and this one is the one in the continuous. And sigma is defined to be a solution in the weak sense, as you can see, because I'm testing against the test function. Uh, of the equation that I had before. So this would be the sigma, so sigma dot equals delta sub sigma applied to sigma, okay? And there have been many, many results. I'm just quoting some that were relevant for our, for comparing uh, our study uh, that, that prove this convergence in the space of probability measures, okay? So I said weak convergence here, but at the moment I, I don't want to focus on uh, on the precise details. So this was for the, if we want to say, spatially, spatially homogeneous uh, replicator equation because there is no space dependence on anything here. And now we want to put the space dependent. So this becomes spatially inhomogeneous because also the space will play a fundamental role. And this complicates things a little bit, meaning that it makes them richer on one sense and, and more delicate to, to, to treat on the other sense. So now our, our space, our state space is Y, which is given by the Cartesian product, as I announced before, by RD and of, of RD and the probability measures of mu. And the, the, the general element, little y of capital Y, is going to be the pair X and sigma. So that's the position of the player together with the portfolio strategies that they have together with the mixed strategy. Okay? And then we take a probability distribution on Y. And as I said before, this is the... Um, uh, the distribution of players with, with their own strategies. And now we want to study the evolution of this capital sigma, basically. But to do this, uh, that happens in the space of probability measures, we want to look at the particle description in a way. So we want to look at what happens in the, say, in the more physical space RD across P of U, okay? So the evolutions of the positions and, and, and of the strategies. And now the dynamics that we prescribe is the following one. So we take a, say, infinitesimal velocity if you want. So E has to be looked at as, 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 a, as a velocity field that is influenced by the strategy. Okay, so the, the E is influenced by the position at which the player is and by the distribution of the, uh, by the, uh, the mixed strategy that the player is, is considering at that time. And this is averaged out uh, with all the uh, with, uh, with respect to all of the of the possible realizations of this uh, of the strategies, and this prescribes the velocity uh, x dot towards which uh, points the evolution of of x. So, uh, if you want to imagine something, you might want to imagine that we have a um, evacuation problem, and uh, there's a room, and there are people that want to leave the room. So x dot will tell me where I want to point, in which way I want to, to head to, to leave the room. Say that there's an emergency, a fire, something at the airport happening and you have to escape. These are the type of problems that are usually simulated with this, um, with this um, type of dynamics. And if, if, I, if I have a person that's standing right between me and the door, then I cannot go through that person, right? So I have either to move to a little bit to the left of the person or to the right of the person to sort of go, go by the person and, 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 and then just find my way out. So the average velocity will suggest that I point towards the person, but then the realization that I have, this little u that's here, is, is going to be either left or right in this sense, okay? So now, 
since I want to describe the system in the space capital Y, now I have to see this as, as regard this as a, as a function A, depending on both X and sigma, so depending on, 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 on the full uh, state Y, right? And this is, is a certain map that, that picks the state in, in the space capital Y and gives me a vector back. Uh, then I have to play the replicator game. So what I want to do is to choose my kernel that now is not just on u cross u, but it's rd cross u squared. And this is assumed to be a Lipschitz function, which generates the delta kernel. And the way it does it is the, exactly the same way as, as it did before. But now, since we also have special dependencies on, on the x's here, so this is me at position x playing strategy u against my opponent at position y playing, sorry, x prime, playing strategy U prime. What do I do here? I average out against all the possible strategies of my opponents and all the possible positions and uh, mixed strategies of my opponents, which would be the first uh, integral or the first sum uh, in, the, in the simpler cases. And then I subtract what I do when I average out all over my strategies. So there's the W here in the sigma W, which is my strategy, okay? Uh, like simple letters is, is myself, primed letters are, are the opponents. So this is basically the translation into the inhomogeneous um, setting of the equation uh, of the construction of the kernel that we had before. Okay, and the right way to do that is to wait to average out with respect to the distribution of, of play of positions and strategies of the players. And now if you put all of this together, then the evolution of the state Y is the evolution of X and the evolution of Sigma, which is described by this vector field B, which depends on capital Sigma. Now this, if I forget everything else, it's uh, an ordinary differential equation in the convex set Y. So Y has a convex uh, property, which is going to be relevant if, if you want to look at the mathematical details of this. And uh, now we have uh, to our help uh, all the theory of, of ordinary differential equations in Banach spaces to try and, and, and find what properties this equation and the solution have, okay? Um, what is needed to do though is to embed Y in a slightly larger space because uh, we have to, uh, to make variations to, to, to go back and forth basically. So we need to consider this uh, F, curly F of U, which is called the RN cell space, which is the closure. So technically is the closure of the span of the probability measures in the bounded Lipschitz norm. So the details are given here. What's important now is that in this y bar endowed with the natural norm, which is the Euclidean norm for the RD component and the bounded Lipschitz norm for the measure component. This turns out to be a separable, a separable Banach space. And f of u has some properties which are, might be interesting for people that um, want to know details about, uh, about the functional, functional analytic properties of, of this space. But details can be found in the book by Weaver and, and in a paper by, by Ambrosia and Pugliese. So with these tools at hand, then uh, we, can, uh, we can try and study this, this evolution equation. Before doing that, though, I want to uh, focus a little bit on what, what, what we call the formal derivation of the master equation, which would be the continuity equation, because this has all the uh, concepts that are needed for uh, then looking at the uh, approximation scheme later on. Um, so now we fix a time, we fix a time, we fix a, a time step H and we take an initial datum like a given probability distribution. And then what we want to find is to build a discrete solution that lives in the probability uh, space of continuous maps from time into the Y uh, space, right? So these are curves, so these are paths uh, on which we want the measure to be concentrated and uh, we want them to be piecewise affine. And then the heuristic idea, that's the one that you should focus on throughout, uh, well, until the end for, for, the, uh, for the approximation scheme is the following one. So uh, let's suppose that at time uh, IH, so at a given time T, I sit at a position X bar with my strategy sigma bar. How do I evolve? So the first thing that I do is that I play the replicator game and I choose the strategy, which is the most convenient for me. So I make this uh, sigma bar evolve by a little step uh, of size h, say, in the direction suggested by the kernel, the replicator kernel, okay? And then what I do, I, I update also my position. So the position was given by uh, 
the velocity was given by the integral of this e, if you remember. And now I pick one particular strategy u with the probability sigma bar prime, which is the one that I've already transported to my, uh, which I've already updated. Okay. And then if one makes a fairly reasonable assumptions on the boundedness of these kernels and the functions, and uh, they satisfy some equilibrium properties uh, that allow us to basically say that as, as, as n goes to infinity, so as h goes to zero, then this path converges in, in, uh, in, the, probability, in the probability space. And what does it converge to then? Well, we test it in, uh, in this way. So we take the difference between sigma t plus h minus sigma times t, and we work out the details in the language of, of uh, the evolution of probability measures. And then we have this. So at first order, we, we measure the velocity. So we have that uh, the sigma evolves like sigma plus h, the delta, and then the space as well, x of t plus h was x bar plus h and the small e. So now we, it turns out that we obtain uh, the, the two green uh, quantities equal to one another. And here we can see the evolution, the time evolution of the uh, probability measure capital sigma. And then if we integrate by parts on this side, uh, we can put this uh, derivative here on the field b and sigma. So we get the divergence of that, right? So then with a little help of uh, theoretical tools, we can prove that we have convergence to this equation here, which is the continuity equation. So we have the t sigma plus the divergence of sigma driven by the velocity field B, which was the right-hand side of the evolution of the state Y in the, say, in the physical space, equals to zero. And then, again, starting from the, uh, from the given initial, initial uh, probability distribution. Now that's the equation that we that we want to study, and uh, to get a little bit of understanding of that, let's focus on on uh, a discrete setting. So we have a capital M players, and then we can describe the evolution of y in this way. So we have a an interaction field that makes interact the two different points, the small y and small y prime, in the in the physical space, which has an x component, which is given by the velocity, the spatial velocity here and has a sigma component, which is given by the interaction prescribed by the, uh, by the replicator equation. And then through the introduction of this interaction field, then we can write the evolution in a fairly compact form in this way. So we have the y prime is given by the summation here. Then if we go to the continuous setting for distributed players, we have that the right hand side, so y prime equals the field b sigma is given by this. Uh, by this expression here. So uh, there's the interaction, that's, that's the averaged interaction between the player y, that's and the, the, the state y of the system and all the possible other realizations through the distribution sigma t. And then what we have is also that um, we can associate transition maps or flow maps in the language of ordinary differential equation to the, uh, to the equation here. And this one are also those that uh, can be used uh, uh, by evaluating the push forward to evolve the probability measure. So this bold face y tells me if I start uh, at, point y, at point y at time s, where am I going to be at time t, right? So that's, that's the meaning of these transition maps. And then the solution satisfies precisely these two constraints. And now we want to give the two meanings of the two concepts of solution that I introduced before. So the Eulerian one and the Lagrangian one. So now let's consider the flow map, uh, bold, bold Y that I introduced before, and then the, the transported measure. So I, I, I take the push forward of the measure sigma bar, that was the initial one, into a sigma hat. And now these ones can be seen um, to, to satisfy this continuity equation, which is driven by the field B sigma. Okay, and so in the left hand side, we have the time derivative basically, and then in the right hand side, we have the divergence uh, of that. Now we can give this definition. So we say that sigma is a Eulerian solution of the initial value problem for the master or continuity equation. If it satisfies this equation here in weak sense, so start it from the given initial datum so that if it, if if it happens that this equation holds with sigma bar equals uh, sigma hat equals sigma, 
right? Then we say on the other side that sigma is a Lagrangian solution, starting from the given initial datum here, if it's the evolution through the flow map of this initial datum, uh, or the transition maps uh, that we call like this. So now we have two different concepts that, that are reminiscent of the definition of Eulerian and Lagrangian solutions for a uh, system that one studies generally in, I don't know, mathematical physics or, or these this, this two different concepts. One is the evolution of the distribution, the other one is you sit at a point and you see what goes through that point. So the, uh, the existence and uniqueness theorem that we, that we could prove is, is this one. So we have to assume that all the ingredients of a system, so the, 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 the kernel J and the velocity field E are Lipschitz maps, and we define the interaction uh, function as, as before. And then we can say that for every given initial statum with bounded first moments, so that's the meaning of this one down here, there exists a unique Lagrangian solution, and the flow map satisfies some additional regularity properties. And then there exists a constant L, such that for each pair of two initial data in P1, we can measure the, the distance of the solutions in Wasserstein metric uh, by this, this parameter here. So then we can say that if uh, sigma one converges to sigma two in some sense, and this was the uh, discrete to continuum limit or the mean field limit if you want to. So you start from a probability initial probability measure, which is an uh, empirical one, which is this discrete, and then you make it converge to a continuous one, then also the solutions will converge because this Wasserstein distance will go to zero, right? So also the solutions will converge, and this is the proof of the, uh, of the mean field limit uh, of the system. So now one can observe that Lagrangian solutions are also Eulerian, so existence of Eulerian solution is also proved. The proving uniqueness of Eulerian solution is much, much harder. I'm not going to give any, any technical details about this, but I'm going to give you the flavor or at least mention a couple of things that are um, relevant for understanding why uh, or what needs to be done to, to tackle the problem of uniqueness of uh, Eulerian solutions. Um, so the uniqueness can be, can be proved using either one of two methods. One is the duality method, which uh, which applies here. So one has to consider a backward forward system. And uh, I would say that the details are in the uh, Ambrosio G. Severo book somewhere where they deal about probability measures, but it's some pretty well established tool to, to deal uh, with uniqueness in this sense. The drawback of this is that some further regularity is needed uh, at some point. Whereas one can use the superposition principle, which was already present in, as I said, in Ambrosio G. Severo for the case of Euclidean spaces. It was stated uh, by its mean of, of occurrence, and then it was uh, extended, I would say, by Ambrosian and Trevisan in 2014 in the space R infinity. Um, and then by superposition, one can have no further regularity assumptions, but uh, only has to restrict to the case of positive measures, I think. So there's a little bit of a blanket which is too short, but superposition method is a very powerful one um, to, to prove uniqueness of, of a Lerian solution. And all the technical details here rest on the fact that um, the space Y is convex. Uh, the important properties of this uh, data of the system, so the structural uh, functions that describe the system, F, E, and J, uh, are just the Lipschitz property. Not, no specific uh, expression was considered, just the fact that they were Lipschitz, and that we look that we work in, in, a, in, in a framework of Banach spaces. Um, and then also I wanted to uh, underline uh, that uh, the, the method for solving this problem is to look for a fixed point. So there's a fixed point uh, principle undergoing this, uh, solving this, this equation and, and, and it's written here, right? So we have to solve this, uh, say the, the, the condition for being a Eulerian solution in the weak sense with sigma hat equals sigma. So one here looks really for a fixed point, uh, for a fixed point theorem. Now, um, I want to move now to this other uh, topic, which is the social dynamic with label switching, because now the label that I'm calling here is exactly uh, the strategy that, that I was describing before. But now we can allow for uh, individuals to, to switch. 
So the motivation comes from a leader follower dynamics problem that was uh, tackled in this paper by Sloan Green and some of his co-authors. Uh, we were able to frame it in the, in the, in the language that I've just finished describing. And then we, we extended it to the case of multiple and continuous labels. So you have to imagine that these labels are sort of species uh, and, and one can change from one, from one to the other. Uh, again, we also have interacting agents and uh, uh, the label identifies the, the, the type of population that, that, that the agents belong to. And uh, so in the typical problem that I, that I mentioned before as the, uh, the one about uh, evacuating room, uh, I think it is well known that maybe large uh, uh, buildings such as airports or maybe uh, malls uh, have uh, inf the so-called informed agents. So these are people that are there for helping the security of the, of the location. And in particular, when there's an emergency, they reveal or sort of identify themselves and shout something like, hey, I know where the exit is, follow me. So this compared to the average uh, customer of the, of the mall or the average passenger in the airport makes a distinction between the two agents because one is, is led to believe in them that they, that they know where the exit is. So they, 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 they work like opinion leaders. They, draw, they drive the dynamics in, in a slightly faster way, you know, in a, if we want to think that. And what's, what's also um, reasonable to introduce are those two things. So, so birth and death rates within a given population. Biologically, it's very, it's very well understood. Maybe one can think about uh, different populations as being as being, uh, say, voters for different political parties, and that's the same thing. So people can uh, change their minds and then they can go to, uh, to, to give their vote to a different political party. And also label switching is something which is interesting to, to, to introduce because within the same party, maybe there are leaders, uh, and then one can rise to preeminence as being a leader, or some leaders can be sort of demoted and, and, uh, and uh, go back to being general individuals in a way, or uh, that, that also happens if there are too many leaders and then the, the, the leadership is not very well identified, so the, the weight is a little bit, uh, is a little bit damped. And applications, uh, well, the social dynamic application is, is pretty much evident by the examples that I gave, but also to chemical reaction networks uh, as the reagents can, can change uh, their, their nature and therefore that's equivalent to, to, to a label switching in some sense. So maybe I go a little faster here because I see that uh, time is running and the, uh, the setting is pretty much the same as before. There are some just, just some changes in notation to be more consistent with what things mean here. But we have X in RD, the position of an agent, U, the compact set of space of labels. And then now we call lambda for label, the probability, uh, the mixed strategy for the uh, for this. And this is, can be thought of as the, the probability of belonging to a certain subset of, of you. And then the model that uh, Francesco Solombrin and I proposed was a, a minimal model that, can, that is able to couple this no local transport dynamics, which is the one given by the, uh, the motion of in, in, uh, in X, uh, with a Markov type jump process. And this is the one looking at the, 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 change, the change of labels. So now uh, we have to describe how both X and lambda evolve. So a, a, a particle in sitting at position Xi with a probability distribution lambda i experiences a velocity field given by a function V, which in this case depends on the state of the system, which was not the case uh, so far for the replicator equation. Okay? And then the labels evolve to a transition map, they evolve according to a transition map, this uh, curly T that also depends uh, on the uh, global state of the system and uh, explicitly on both this, the position of the player and the label that the player has. Agent of player is it's the same thing. Okay. And um, so the, as I said before, the motivating example was leader follower case. So in this case, we have U, which is the space of uh, strategies, which is just two items, follower or leader, right? And then we focused on this because it's, it, it, it's 
something that's pretty well studied in, in the literature, both for from the mathematical point of view and in view of applications to, to social dynamics, as I, as I mentioned before. And then what happens here is that the, the velocity field can be prescribed in this way. Um, there's a, a kernel that the followers um, experience, multiplying the probability of being a follower, basically. And then there's a kernel, that there's a part of the velocity given by a kernel, uh, a leader kernel, weighted by the probability of being a leader, basically. And then the interaction is, is, is spatial. Okay, so it measures the distance between where I am and where the person that I'm interacting with is. And these are the transition maps, which in this case is just a matrix, basically. It's a two by two matrix um, with coefficients uh, alpha f and uh, alpha l. So f for followers, of course, and f for leaders. And one can observe that uh, they, they, the columns sum to zero. Okay, so there's no, um, there's no loss in mass, basically. So what, what one goes out of being in the state of follower then goes in in the other side, right? In this case, and this was the model studied by Albi, Bongini, Rossi, and Sombrino, the velocity field does not depend on the lambdas. Uh, and this T psi really does not depend on the position X, okay? So what we did was to consider full dependence of all these uh, in, in this way. So again, uh, since we also, we already have the theoretical tools at our disposal, the, the, the results obtained with uh, Ambrosio, Fournazier and, and Savarel, uh, our main point was to find conditions on the velocity field deep psi and on the transition maps deep psi to ensure the well-posedness on this model in the uh, framework that I've just finished describing in a way that we can get the same results, basically. So to show that if we, if we start from a um, empirical distribution, this converges to uh, a solution to the continuity equation, and also uh, check what Eulerian and solution means, prove the equivalence in this case of, of, the, of the two concepts. Uh, and then again, for your benefit, the Lagrangian concept of solution is, is reported here. So it's the push forward of the initial state through the flow map. Uh, associated with this, this ODE. So the hypothesis on the Psi that we identified are the following. Um, we need them, so we need the V to be, say, Lipschitz with respect to the, to the states, and this is this condition, uniformly with respect to the uh, probability distribution of, of agents and, and labels. And then we need it to be, uh, in a way, Lipschitz, uh, but in the Wasserstein sense, with respect to comparing two different probability distributions, Psi 1 and Psi 2. And then we need them to be bounded uh, in this way. Okay, and similar hypotheses are, are needed for the T. So the T1 here is pretty much the, the same as the V3, and then the T2 is the same as the V1 and V2 before. We have though to add two more conditions. One is that constants are in the kernel uh, of T Psi. So when we do uh, the duality product between T Psi and the constants, say one, this gives us zero. And this forces the evolution to move on the tangent plane to the probability, to, to the space of probabilities on, on, on you. And then we have to also add this last condition T3, which says that T psi applied to Y plus lambda plus delta R lambda is positive. And this has the advantage or actually the, the, the really important role of preserving the positivity of measures. So if we start from a positive measure, then we, we move along the tangent plane to the, the space of probability measures and we stay positive again. So we still have uh, a probability distribution. And then the theorem that we prove is, is, is this one. So the point one is that there exists a unique Eulerian solution to the uh, continuity equation driven by the vector field B. And uh, we have convergence. So we have the uh, discrete to continuum limit or the mean field limit, if you want to call it, uh, in, this, in this way. So if we have an initial distribution, which is uh, discrete that converges to one in the continuous, then the solutions also converge uniformly with respect to time in the metric, in the Wasserstein metric. So now I want to give you a couple of examples of admissible transitions and we work them out in the case of a finite and discrete set of labels, U1, UH, and then the transition maps, if we also make the extra assumptions that they are linear in the lambda variable, 
then we can represent this operator through a matrix. And the matrix here has, has uh, really interesting interpretations because each entry, H, A, sorry, alpha HK, is a function measuring the transition rate from the level H to the level K. And in a way that the elements in the diagonal together with the minus sign are interpreted as global departure rates from level H, so those who abandon the, the, particular, the particular label. And moreover, there are, this can be related to something already present in the literature about Markov chains, which is the following object. So there, there are matrices that are called Q-metrics that serve to integrate in the systems of evolution like this for, for Markov chains. And this is precisely the case when Q is independent, so it's a constant matrix, basically. Then one can, one can integrate the system through the exponential of a matrix. Now, the presence of the dependence of X and Psi makes things a little complicated, and it's not always possible to do that. And then for checking what admissible velocities, examples of admissible velocities are, then one can consider uh, this object here, mu Psi of H, which is the, uh, the distribution of agents that have uh, label H, and then use this to make, uh, to describe the evolution, to describe the velocity field here. So you check, say, all the leaders or all the followers, and then they, uh, you see how they influence the, the evolution. Okay, so this V psi can be interpreted as an average velocity of the system, which is weighted by the probability lambda k here of the edge of having uh, label k. And then uh, we made our system to talk to the one developed by uh, Albi, Bongini, Rossi, and Solombrino in their paper. Uh, and it's basically this, this fact. So they assume that the kernels only depended on one, on one uh, index and not on two of them. And so the summation here can be factored out. The lambda k sum up to one. And so what remains is that the v psi is just the convolution of that one kernel with double h through the with the um, distribution of, of agents with, uh, with level H. Uh, and then the dynamical system can be rewritten in this, in this way. So there's uh, the time derivative of the mu, the divergence term, and this is the uh, continuity equation, and it's a forced one. So what are the forcing terms? Where there's uh, all the people that, that, all the agents that leave age, uh, state le level H, sorry, and all the agents that go into level H from other level Ks. So this also includes this uh, label switching things and birth and death rates that I mentioned before at the beginning. If we want to check what happens in the continuum, then we can uh, go back to U being a compact metric space. So we want still to describe the velocity field B with the kernel, uh, with the interaction kernel between two, two, two states of the system Y and Y prime. And then we need to have V and J's that are the, 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 the densities of these kernels, basically of the X component and on the uh, lambda component of these, that can be written in this way. And also here we, we take this specific form where the function G is interpreted again as the global departure rate from the label U. So that works as the diagonal elements of the discrete case. And then we have that uh, if uh, the V's and the J's are locally Lipschitz with respect to all of the variables and uh, happen to be sublinear in the special variables, and if G is given in this way, now it's, it's, it's going to be clear in a second why, then the fields satisfy, uh, the velocity fields satisfies conditions V1 and V3, and the transition kernel satisfies conditions D0 and D3 that I explained before, so that the machinery uh, of the first part of the talk can be applied and the solutions can be proved to exist. And this has the effect that also the, um, uh, the, the lambda part of the kernel can be written uh, in a more explicit form in this way. So that's an interaction between what happens and the unprimed states against the prime states. And this formula here, if the G is assumed to, to satisfy property orange G, then compresses in this way. So now let me finish by presenting uh, the steps of the alternate Lagrangian approximation scheme, which is uh, the one that uh, I studied with uh, Francesco Sombrino and also with Stefano Almi. And uh, this is thought of as a scheme for approximating this nonlinear continuity equation. Uh, so it's 
Lagrangian because traces the evolution of position and labels along the characteristic curves of the solution of the system. And then it's alternate because it's, it's done in two, in two different steps. So first, we update the strategies or labels, and then we update the position of the, of the agents. And as I said at the beginning, you should remember the uh, heuristic derivation because, uh, because this is exactly what we implement in, in the numerical scheme, in the approximation scheme. So let's, let's look back at that. So the strategy optimization is we take lambda and x that are the given state at some, at some point, and then h is the time step. So we evolve lambda by, by this law, basically. And then we update the position here where the u now, as before, is chosen with the new, with the updated uh, probability lambda prime. And then the new distribution can be also defined by duality in this way, okay, which was part of the um, heuristic derivation of the master equation that I described before. So more in detail, and this is going to be my concluding slide, uh, the problem here is that if we have full dependence uh, on uh, of the velocity that field B, which is the right hand side for the ODE for Y prime, on the distribution psi, requires a partial update of the of the distribution psi at the intermediate step, right? So the point is this: so we start from uh, x and lambda given, and then we we first update lambda to lambda prime. So the update is given by with this law. So we have the time step here, and then uh, we, we evolve uh, with the position that we, we with the uh, level, say with the probability that we have at time tik. And then we need to do a partial update of the system. So what happens here is that these lambdas uh, are the interpolation points at the nodes uh, k is the uh, sorry, i and i plus one are two different uh, time time intervals. So we we do this uh, linear interpolation and we lift the curve to uh, capital lambda in the space of probability measures. And now we use this to make the push forward of the uh, discretized distribution at at uh, time i to say an intermediate one at time i plus one. I say intermediate because the lambda gets updated with the new lambda that I've just found, but then in the X component, I still have the identity because I haven't updated my position yet. And then I use this psi, capital Psi tilde to also update my position. So I have the new belief of the probability distributions, and then I use that to move uh, forward in this way. And then the final thing that I have to do is I also lift this X into the space of probability measures, so into the capital X, and I take the full push forward of the uh, Psi at times at time I, and then I obtain the Psi at time uh, I plus one, basically. And then, so if, if we thought of this, of course, there was going to be a convergence result and the theorem that we prove is that, uh, the scheme above converges in the Wasserstein metric uh, to a solution of the continuity equation driven by the vector field, the velocity field B, starting from a given initial point uh, uh, psi hat. I mean, the, the result was obvious. The technicalities to prove it, uh, to prove it are, are quite subtle and complicated. And I just want to finish with this. I thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions that you have.